Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. This video is sponsored by Southern New Hampshire University and their online Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Game Design. More on that later. In the last letter from the chairman, Chris Roberts and Richard Trier revealed that they were developing a roadmap that would outline what would and, in their words, most importantly would not, be in a 1.0 commercial release. When the results of that task become known, the upset over what would not be included in their list will certainly be intense. And the best counter for that will be for CIG to be able to say that they listen to us. And for CIG to be able to say that they listen to us, well, we have to say something. And in particular, we have to talk about the features besides all the neat stuff in Squadron 42. Because, of course, all the neat stuff from Squadron 42 will be brought across because, well, of course. In the last video, I talked about multiplayer crew. In this one, I'm going to talk about CIG's career backlog. A lot of talk has been given to the ship backlog, but the career backlog is actually much more significant and isn't going to be helped much from things imported from Squadron 42 because in Squadron 42, everyone's career is fighter pilot. And although it looks like there may be some engineering around the edges, so mostly going by what CIG has sold us as career-oriented ships. Here is the full list of promised careers in Star Citizen in alphabetical order. Bounty Hunter, Builder Crafter, Cargo Hauler, Commodity Trader, Data Runner, Doctor, Engineer, Explorer, Merchant, Miner, Mercenary, News Reporter, Passenger Transport, Pirate, Racer, Refiner, Refueler, Ship Repair, Salvager, and Scientist. And if you think that's a lot of career choices, it's nothing compared to the over 200 career-focused degrees offered by Southern New Hampshire University. Wow, was that the smoothest sponsor segue ever or what? And it's not as though SNHU is still working on the Tier 0 version of their online degrees. SNHU started online classes in 1995. Do you remember the internet in 1995? I do. Less than 14% of American homes had internet access at all, and only 4% of them had the latest and greatest 22.8 kilobaud dial-up modems. Just hope your sister didn't want to call anybody mid-assignment. And in 1997, they started a bachelor's degree in business administration that could be completed in three years, and in 1998, their first online doctorate. Imagine the vision and boldness to try something so big over an internet still so limited. But they understood, as today, the power of having coursework and access available at any hour of the day so that students can learn around whatever their time zone and whatever their other life responsibilities and leveraging that technology to provide a radically affordable cost per unit. If that sounds interesting, whether for computer game programming or any other field, visit www.snhu.edu slash raise guide to fill out the form and talk to a real person. That part can still be old school about any questions you might have. That's snhu.edu slash raise guide. Returning to the Star Citizen 1.0 careers, I'll be dividing that earlier list into four groups. First, ones that are complete or nearly complete for which just a few tweaks or balance items might still be left. These obviously would have included in any 1.0 release. Second, ones that are semi-complete but are still needing some necessary features. These also should be part of a 1.0 release. Third, ones that have not or only barely been started for which, for one reason or other, really should be considered must-haves for a 1.0 release. And fourth, ones that have not or only barely been started, which might be considered as possibly 1.x features. And I'm going to be very skeptical about assigning these classifications. After all, we have seen some careers, particularly data running and passenger transport, be in the release view and then disappear completely for years. So let's dig into the categories. Category 1. Frankly, in my opinion, only mining, racing, and piracy could make it in as they are to 1.0 with only minor changes to their current feature set. Piracy, of course, needs a resolution as to how to implement quantum snares and dampening into master modes, but that is a bigger issue than just piracy. Category 2. Things that are existing but need significant fleshing out. First, bounty hunting. This needs that tier 2 features of being able to immobilize prisoners and transport them for delivery. We've seen the cuffs from Squadron 42, but that still leaves open for transportation, the use of cryocells, and testing how all this works if the player backspaces while captured and in transport. In addition, I believe that bounty hunting, or rather kidnapping for ransom, is how the gangs of Pyro will punish offenders rather than have an actual prison system. 
commodity trading need more dynamism in pricing and routes, and as I've said before, this can be accomplished most easily by simply getting the planets in motion. So get those planets moving already, guys. As for doctors, we have a limited medical capability in the game, but it's easily available to all the time to anybody, so there isn't any reason for somebody to say, I'm the doctor. A while back, I theorycrafted that the way to expand the medical gameplay was to say that the tiers of med beds are only applied to the level of injury that they could handle autonomously, but that with an operator at the screen, the doctor carrier, they could do a mini game to reduce the high level injuries to the point where the med bed could finish it autonomously. In addition, there would be a tier four portable medical unit in a backpack sized device that could handle any tier injury, but always needed an operator. Explorer, I'd rather this remain a free form career and let you decide what you are exploring for, whether it's a great view, a rich ore deposit, a wreck, a cave, or whatever. But it is still missing even with that one thing, and that is the ability to persistently mark someplace and be able to trade that marker with others. Then you can call it a career. Mercenary is sort of in a good place with one exception. There needs to be a one-button distress call to create a combat assistance beacon, and in safer systems, and in lesser systems, if you're in a zone under gang that you have high rep with, that there will be an NPC response with an appropriate delay. Because in a world where hostile players can go anywhere, the only thing that makes a safer system safer is that when you call for help, help comes. Salvage is not in a bad place now, but we have been promised both data salvage, which would be tied to the Category 3 data running, and fuel recovery, which is also tied to finishing up the refueling mechanism. Now on to that Category 3, careers which we haven't really seen in the game, but which we really do need to be in a version 1.0, and why. First, cargo hauling. We've been promised cargo contracts being just around the corner, but we haven't seen them demonstrated, and there's an interesting problem. How do you create cargo contracts when one person might be showing up in a Hall A and another in a Hercules C2? I've suggested that the way to do that is to just have fractional acceptance. The location has a thousand SCU of some cargo that needs to get to the distribution center, and you accept 64, for example. Kind of like a hybrid of how missions work now and how commodity training is done now. Also, before being 1.0 worthy, there needs to be a reputation factors and dynamic factors with moving planets. Remember that with 1.0, we will be trying to go years without a wipe, so stationary planets will seem dumber and dumber with each month. Data running is a career that has been just around the corner so many times. I feel it should be a 1.0 career principally because it feels like a career that a beginner player would be suited to, as well as how long we've been waiting for it. It needs to actually be able to use a Herald or Star Runner ship and should have white hat, black hat, and gray hat paths to it. Gray hat, for those unfamiliar with the term, is either lawful tasks done for unlawful purposes, like those guys in hard hats running data centers for Xenothreat, or unlawful actions for lawful purposes, such as network intrusion of systems already stolen by Xenothreat. Engineering we have seen demonstrated at CizenCon, but not yet in the game, so out of caution, I am keeping it in this category. When we see it, engineering might jump straight to Category 1, but I am more suspecting that it will be spending some time in Category 2. Now the Merchant. This is a career path that I am going to break into two parts. The first is a personal merchant interface, which for most MMOs is called a secure trading system. We initiate trading between us. We go to a screen that sort of resembles the current inventory system. You drag what you want to trade, including UEC, from your side to the middle section. I drag what I want to trade to the middle section, including UEC possibly. When each of us is satisfied and want no further changes, we both accept and the trade is done. I know you might say that's not diegetic enough, but I have seen several MMOs implement this kind of system sometime during beta, and in every case, as soon as it was implemented, player interaction went way up because the trust barrier went down. Now, the other form of merchant gameplay, where I'm able to set up a kiosk on my Banu Merchantman or Kraken Privateer that players can access is also a desired feature for 1.0, but of course only if either or both of those ships are in 
If they turn out to be 1.x ships, then at least the personal secure trading system must be a part of any MMO to have it in 1.0. Passenger transport. This is another one that has seemed to be right around the corner many times in the past. I am in favor of it being on the 1.0 timeline required list because jumping right into the game for the first time and becoming a space taxi guy feels like an appropriate way to introduce yourself as a new player to the big scope of the universe. And it feels like nearly everything that is needed is there already if they just have pathing worked out in Squadron. Refiner and Refueler. These are needed for deep space independence and particularly since the root of the refueling is in the game you have to be able to finish that loop on the Starfare and have it not be tied to having so often go be have to make the long trip back to refill. I might have been willing to let refining on other than the Starfare be a 1.x feature but since it has been promised on so many ships I am keeping it at 1.0. Which then brings us now to the 1.x list which is where, of course, the real controversy appears. Here is where I expect to have people disagree, perhaps vehemently, but here are my choices and my reasons. First, Builder Crafter. The reason for making this a 1.x is that we want new players to spend perhaps quite a significant amount of time exploring and appreciating how large and wonderful the verse is. Having players see on some YouTube that the best way to get rich is to go to this place and buy these materials and buy those plans and just grind, grind, grind this recipe is a sure way to a million credits per hour. It might make them rich, so to speak, but will it make them love the verse? No, and it might even lead to hiring third world techno surfs. No, I'd rather encourage becoming a builder or crafter to be what players think about doing in their second year in the verse. And thus, I'm okay with it being a 1.x feature. Second, ship repair with the crucible. I'm putting this one in 1.x because with ships becoming more complicated and the way we do major repairs on them also becomes more complicated. The crucible will likely need to be entirely reconcepted and I think holding up 1.0 for that would be unwise. And third, science. Frankly, nobody really knows what science gameplay is expected to be and how it is particularly different than exploration. Yet we have two science ships distinctly separate from all the exploration ships, and I am fine with putting them off for 1.x, because since nobody knows what science gameplay loop is, nobody's going to miss it. I've done my own theory crafting for science, and I see it as a huge money and time sink with the potential to possibly be hugely profitable that ties into crafting professions, and so, again, 1.x. And finally, News Reporter. We have the Reliant Mako, but no particular game loop concept for it, and no reason why a streamer would be any better a streamer for using it. So if it takes all the way to 1.x to get figured out, well, no tears for me. In my next video in this series, I'm going to take on the backlog that is even larger than the ship backlog and the career backlog, and that is, presuming you are one of the few people that still takes the 100 star systems promise seriously, the 100 star systems backlog, and discuss how many we actually need for 1.0 versus 1.x and which ones they should be in the 1.0 version. Finally, an update on our Grow the Channel ship giveaways. We continue to make progress towards awarding some lucky player, the Zippy Zazzy Zaftig Zephyr, the Zeus 2 Cargo, as well as toward the marvelous multi-user multi-role mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video, just be a member for automatic entry, or subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the ship that I feel will have to be reconcepted because ships as a whole have changed so much. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.